Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we're going to be installing this PG1 gearbox into the ZR, ready for the K-Turbo swap, or to add to the K-Turbo swap. I need to change that clutch arm first, because one, I'm pretty sure that's TF clutch arm, or an F clutch arm, and two, I've got a brand new ZR clutch arm there, and I'm pretty sure that one's seized anyway. But before everyone shouts at me, I, uh, I've not got a flywheel for this yet, I've not got a clutch for this yet. And also, I'm going to be running more power than I expected to. Um, we're going to run a 200 brake base map, but with the turbo I have in that box, which is the T28 turbo, I can't really run low boost at 200 brake. It would just be ridiculous, and I'd probably overboost all the time. And going with a standard manifold, internal wastegate, you know, it's a bit of a problem, but I'm going to show you something quickly. Right, so what I wanted to show you guys is the fact that one, we've not got a gearbox in here, two, wrong gearbox mount. And I've got all the wiring done now, I didn't record that, I just put all the wiring together. This part of the loom, I'm not going to wrap yet, because I'm pretty sure I need to adapt part of it. But for now, that can just stay out of the way. The gearbox needs to go in there. The way I'm going to get the gearbox in, I would just fucking lift it up and drop it in, but it ain't going to fit, because that gearbox mount and the engine's just a little bit too close. And no, I'm not putting a flywheel on yet, or a clutch. I'm going to save for a flywheel and a clutch. I need an uprated clutch for the amount of power I'm going to be running. So I might as well just wait and get it all at the same time. That wheel's going to need to come off. And we're not need to undo the bottom arm, pull the suspension out, slide the gearbox under. So, a big ass breaker bar and a 12 mil later and a lot of the WD-40. But what was there came out, that was really goddamn tight. And I've just found out the clutch arm seized. And you can see, I was trying to get it off before. I literally knocked it with a hammer once and it broke free. So I'm hoping, with a little bit of wiggling, that it'll start to come off. Also, if you haven't checked out the ABC video, go check that out, because uh, look how good these things are now looking after a restoration. I think I've defeated it. Not 100% sure yet, but it's been about 20 minutes since I last recorded. This clutch arm has been seized. And look, it moves. Oh, I think we're free. There goes the release bearing. This rusty piece of shit was fucking stuck. Fuck you. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, the side of that is really fucking sharp. I've already cut my hand on it. And I've cut my glove as well. It's another day, and I've come back to, obviously, put that thing in. And, uh, currently, I've got the car jacked up. I told, uh, I told, I took the old mount off. I'm not sure if it's from a TF or what, but it's not a ZR mount. I took the gearbox mount off the car as well. And I've had an idea to save me jacking the car all the way up. I'm gonna take that wheel off, and the only reason I'm not jacking the car all the way up is because the engine's slanting like fuck. It is secure, like, don't get me wrong. It ain't moving anywhere. But well, it's gonna be obviously putting strain on the engine mount and whatnot. I think if I can take the arch winding off, I might be able to slide this in, do a swift 180, obviously take the wheel off, do a swift 180 and manage to get it in, lower the car back down, jack the gearbox up, put it in that way. Which, if I can, it just makes my life a hell of a lot simpler. I'm not quite sure how the angle of this is, it's probably very bad. But now I think about it, I might have to take the horns off, which really isn't a problem, it's one bolt. And a wire to put the arch liner shifted. Uh, indicators and stuff can go up there. Like I said, I want to put it in and spin it. So. Why didn't I do this in the first place? I think I might need to jack the car up a tiny bit more. But I might be able to actually spin it before it goes through. I didn't have to jack the car up any- oh, that might be an issue. I'm hitting the rear- well, the front rear subframe. Which is a little bit of a pain. I'll just show you. Plastic, what the gearbox is on, is now, well, hitting the jack stand, which, obviously, still there, still supporting the engine, even though it's wonky as fuck at the minute. Look, it's not moving anywhere, that's what matters. Literally, as soon as the gearbox is under it, I'm lowering the car back down and supporting this properly. I need to spin the gearbox on the This is a massive pain in the arse, but it's easier than jacking the car up, taking the whole hub assembly out, 
under the bottom arm because splitting the ball joint is an auto con. Right, technically now the gearbox is under. Right, it's just spinning it. Right, well, that, that's it. Video done. That's how you install the gearbox. You just slide it under the car. And that's it. I want to push it a bit further under lower the car, keep checking it and whatnot. There is literally no point in recording it until I start putting it up. And we're obviously going to change the seals for the uh, drive shafts. But I'll do that when it's all in the car. Like I said earlier, Still need to get flywheel and clutch, but I'm just doing this so I can roll it about. Which makes it easier. The flywheel is cheap. The clutch, still not sure what clutch I'm going for yet. If you're wondering what I'm going to be doing for brakes, because obviously 250 horsepower, around 250 horsepower, with standard 1.4 ZR brakes, not a good idea. What I'm going to be doing is like a custom caliper setup, I think. Then with four pop Brembo's off a R26 Megan, or I'm pretty sure it's the same as the clear 197 Cups same um, calipers and then going with some discs I'm not quite sure what size yet spent a disc probably J groove them maybe dimple them not drilling them because no one likes crack discs and then that's what I'm going to be doing for that setup the rears I'll just probably do a standard 160 rear setup but with another well probably the same caliper just a bigger disc and back pads so it's been a couple of days since I've recorded, I've not really done anything. It's going to be a pain in the arse, I already know that, I don't really have a choice in that, but it's going to be a pain in the arse, I'm not going to record that much of me actually getting the gearbox on. I'll record, obviously, bits here and there, but I'm not going to record me, you know, struggling to line it up and whatnot, because I've got to line it up to that dowel there and that dowel over there, so it's just going to take a lot of time if I record it as well. So, I didn't record me actually putting the gearbox out, I still need to pull it up, it's literally held in by one bolt there and one bolt there. Well, other than that, it's held up by that jack stand, it's all fine and stable and whatnot. I'm, I'm gonna adjust that jack stand and then put one on the back too. And I have realised that that is very goddamn close, while well, it's got light on it. But well, obviously starter, clutch, flywheel, everything he's putting on. But for now, it's, it's all good. Everything's all set up and nice. I need gearbox man obviously but for now it's all right it, it's in for now at least uh, get gearbox mount roll it about and whatnot but if you guys have enjoyed this video like and subscribe down below as you always do i'll see you guys in the next bloody video